Thank you for joining today's online travel presentation, where we uncover the best of Rocky Mountaineer in the American Southwest. My name is Lynn, and I'm pleased to be one of your presenters today. And I'm joined today by a very special guest, Michael Como, National Accounts Manager for Rocky Mountaineer. Today, we're going to learn about Rocky Mountaineer's new US rail route, Rockies to the Red Rocks. It is also the United States premier luxury train. So if you're looking for a touch of luxury train travel in the, U in the United States, you're in the right place. Michael is going to highlight everything we need to know about this route from the outstanding train and the exceptional onboard service to the amazing destinations. And he's also gonna talk about some great itineraries that feature this route available through Vacations by Rail. So as we get started, just a reminder that we will hold, um, have a couple polling questions and those will be uh, smattered throughout the presentation in the beginning and the end. And uh, we definitely want you to participate in those. And also we're going to have a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. So if during the presentation you have any questions, just type them in the GoToWebinar question box and we'll make sure to cover them at the end. So let's kick things off with just a little bit of background about Vacations by Rail. So we are the leading rail vacations company in the United States and the trusted authority on rail. We have the largest collection of vacations to destinations around the globe and the cornerstone of each itinerary is a rail journey aboard at least one iconic train. Vacations by Rail is a great rail journeys company and that means that we're backed by more than 45 years of experience in the specialty of global rail tours. We're a member of the National Tour Association, American Bus Associ Association, and we are AARP's preferred rail provider. And lastly, in addition to unmatched vacations, we offer best-in-class customer care from your first caller email to your return from your trip. So a rail vacation is a great way to get a new perspective on the region that you're traveling through. It's experiential travel at its best. A rail journey with Vacations by Rail is going to offer a distinctive and, and very memorable experience with well-planned um, itineraries packed with quality inclusions, like those iconic train journeys I mentioned, centrally located hotels, and comprehensive sightseeing and authentic experiences. So traveling by train is also an ideal way to cover those long distances rather quickly. You're gonna sit back and enjoy the scenery and leave that navigation and driving to someone else. Um, so now that I've told you a little bit about us, oops, I'm gonna launch our first polling question and it is, have you taken a vacation on Rocky Mountaineer? So go ahead and reply yes or no. We'll keep this open for a, about 15 seconds to give everyone a chance to participate. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and close this poll. And Michael, 15% of our attendees have taken a vacation on Rocky Mountaineer, but that means we have about 85% here who, who can't wait to learn all about it. And I'm sure everyone wants to know about this Rockies to the Red Rocks route. Excellent, well, thank you for uh, inviting me today. And uh, it's glad, I'm glad to see that there are some folks who have uh, taken the Rocky Mountaineer journey before in Canada and, and are interested in our, our new U.S. route. So um, thank you, Lynn, for starting things off and good, good day to everyone. Um, we're very excited at Rocky Mountaineer that we're launching uh, this season our Rockies to the Red Rocks two-day train route out west. Today, my goal is to kind of give you an overview of what the experience is like on board the train. Uh, plus some of the destinations around the train route, as well as some of the tour packages that uh, we have to offer through Vacations by Rail. And um, once again, our company, Rock, uh, Rocky Mountaineer, we've been in business for 31 years now. This is our 31st year. Last season uh, would have been our 30th anniversary season. 
And uh, as you can see from this photograph, uh, it's an older picture for one, um, but this was our first train back in uh, 1990. So we had uh, a bit of a smaller uh, train experience with uh, what we call standard rail cars. So I like to show this photograph because um, essentially what you're looking at is uh, rail cars that are what you would call classic rail cars with small windows uh, and uh, traditional style, if you will. But fast forward 30 years, and over the uh, the course of our history at Rocky Mountaineer, we've accelerated to what we call our all dome fleet. Now, for those folks, the 15% that have traveled with us in Canada, you've probably seen our uh, Gold Leaf or traveled in our Gold Leaf service, which is our dome cars in uh, Canada. And this this shot right here is our train in the Canadian Rockies. Uh, we've been traveling Canadian Rockies for this 30 years, and for a long time, our founder, our owner, uh, Peter Armstrong, has been as aspiring to expand the Rocky Mountaineer product outside of Canada and into new destinations. So we chose the U.S. as an opportunity to create what we call the amazing daylight rail experience. So a lot of folks will ask the question, you know, where do you sleep on board the train? Um, and the, the unique part of what Rocky Mountaineer brings to the the guests that travel with us is that um, we stay overnight in hotels so you can have a nice comfortable night's sleep and not miss the scenery because if you're traveling by by night you're traveling through these mountains and through canyons and gorges out west and you would miss uh, a great majority of the scenery so now here we are in 2021 uh, we just launched the rockies to the red rocks route our first departure was in the middle of august so about a month ago we started operating our trains out uh, between Denver and Moab, and uh, it's been very exciting. Um, I'm happy to say I, I was just on the train a little over a week ago, so I brought today with us uh, some fresh photographs in this presentation that I've taken myself. So um, sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride, if you will. So here's a good map. Uh, a lot of folks like to see a map of what they're where they're traveling and what they're going to be doing. And this kind of gives you an overview of the route itself and some of the destination options in the in the area. So the train route goes both east and west between um, the, the resort town of the national park town of Moab and the uh, Mile High City of Denver. And you see that white diamond in the middle, that's Glenwood Springs, and that's where we will overnight um, halfway through the journey between the two rail days. And again, you can start your journey in Denver and go westbound to Moab, or you can start in Moab on the train and, and finish in Denver. Either way, in either direction, we have packages that include additional touring, either by coach or you can rent a car and do a self-drive package. But most folks will choose a package that includes uh, a local guide and a uh, driver on a coach that will take you through some of the national parks between Moab and Las Vegas or Moab and Salt Lake City. So we have packages anywhere from, um, you know, the three day rail journey only or up to eight day, seven night package with extensive sightseeing and, and national parks um, experiences. I like to point out first, before we talk about the destinations and the product itself, it, um, would like to talk about the class of service on board the train. For those of you who are familiar or may have looked into Rocky Mountaineer uh, for a future vacation experience, you may know that we have two classes of service in Canada. One is Silver Leaf and one is Gold Leaf. When we did our research and planning for this route, we realized that some of the tunnels and bridges uh, were a little bit too low for our Gold Leaf uh, rail cars, which are a taller piece of equipment. So we've brought in our Silver Leaf. And I uh, would like to point out the features of this Silver Leaf product because it is still very much a luxurious rail experience and it's very unique. It's a customized rail car that you will not find anywhere else. So Rocky Mountaineer has designed this, this single level dome coach with large picture windows, very comfortable um, bucket leather seats, and uh, beautiful viewing. These, these windows are massive, they don't look uh, they don't look as big in the photographs as they are in real. And uh, the, I like to show this image because it gives you the scope of the viewing ability, if you will, within the car itself. 
Uh, we seat up to 54 guests in the Silverleaf coach. Uh, the actual um, leg room, or what they call pitch, is um, bigger than you, what you'd find in a domestic first class seat on a plane. So you have several inches more in leg room. You have a large tray that folds down. You'll see on this photograph here, one of our hosts coming up and down the aisle in, in the train car itself, providing our, our meal and uh, beverage service. So we include meals on board the train as well as unlimited drink service. And that also, in, that includes uh, soft drinks, juice, tea, uh, local wine, uh, beer and uh, cocktails as well. So spirits are included. So that's all included in the Rocky Mountaineer package. These are climate controlled cars, uh, very comfortable seating. They have a little recline to them and also a charging station in between both seats so you can charge your uh, phones or iPads or, or whatever, what have you. Uh, your meals are gonna be served right at your seat. We typically include um, a three course uh, meal for either lunch or dinner. And the, the, the dining plan will dep be dependent upon which direction you travel. Today, we're gonna talk about the eastbound route. So I'll, I'll speak to that. You see here, our guests are being served their dessert from one of our hosts. Uh, you could just sit back and relax, enjoy the scenery while you're enjoying your, your dining experience on board the train. We have a, a team that prepares the meals. So they're uh, plated right there within the train car itself and, and delivered right to your, your seat. And again, just looking at the large windows, you can take photographs right from, uh, right from your seat. We also have a little outdoor viewing platform on the back of each car. Um, usually about three or four guests can be out in that platform. There's a window out there. So if you wanna take pictures of the train or of the scenery from, uh, from that little uh, outdoor viewing area, we have that as well. <clears throat> Just another image of our host. And it's important to note that our hosts are not only providing you with the drinks and, and food service, but they're also um, going to provide you with the history and storytelling of the region. So uh, as you can imagine, where these train tracks in Colorado and Utah were built back in the 1800s, there's a great deal of history that goes behind the rail, uh, the rail tracks in the US. And it's really neat to learn about that, as well as the geology, what you're seeing or what you're going to see. And they do also a great job of spotting wildlife. We're able to see some bighorn sheep and a few other um, uh, animals and birds. We saw some bald eagles along the journey going along the Colorado River last week. So it's quite spectacular. We also have an enhanced um, additional service that we call Silverleaf, Silverleaf Plus. Uh, we were asked by our guests and our trade partners, will you have an upgrade available. So we designed what we call uh, Silverleaf Plus, which is essentially the same rail car where you have a seat in the Silverleaf dome car, but you have access to a lounge car. So what we, what we will do is attach the lounge car to um, either the front or the back of the Silverleaf dome and give our guests who purchase Silverleaf Plus the access to the, um, to the uh, uh, lounge car where you can go in and enjoy these comfortable seats. You can order um, from our upgraded uh, beverage menu. So within the, the dome, within the lounge car, you have access to a bar and an additional host. I just took this photograph last week when I was on board the train. And uh, when you're in there, they have some appetizers, some additional snacks, an upgraded drink list with signature cocktails and a few additional wine and, and beer choices. So the addition for the Silver Leaf Plus ranges from 400 and up, depending on the time of the year, the season. But it is very popular and it has been selling out very quickly. So let's talk about the route itself. Um, I'm going to talk about the day from Moab to Glenwood Springs first. And this would be essentially the this, this experiences along the eastbound route starting in Moab. When we leave Moab, we'll board the train at about 1.30 and the train leaves at about 2 p.m. It's about a five hour journey covering about 175 miles between Moab and Glenwood Springs. The train only averages about 35 miles per hour. And we really want that to happen because we want to take our time as we go through some of the winding spectacular scenery. 
So some of the highlights along the journey will feature um, spectacular cliffs, canyons. Um, we go along the Colorado River for much of the journey here. You're going to see Arches National Park from a distance, as well as the LaSalle mountain range, which is spectacular. And as we get into the fall and, and as well in the springtime, if we're thinking about next year, you'll see snow covering uh, Mount Peel and the LaSalle mountains, which is just gorgeous. So a couple of the highlights to, to point out here, um, the book cliffs are a, a range of 200 miles of cliffs that look like stacked books. That's why they call them the, the book cliffs. And uh, they're just spectacular. You'll see them along the journey on this uh, most of this day. And you'll also see um, as we depart Moab, we make a big turn. You'll see in the distance some of the um, red rock scenery of Arches National Park. This is one of the photographs that I took um, about 10 days ago on, on board the train, um, roughly uh, less than an hour from Moab. We traveled through an area called Ruby Canyon. Obviously, given the name Ruby Canyon because of the red rock scenery, uh, as you can see that thousands of years of erosion have created these spectacular red rock cliffs. And you're going through this canyon, you're going along the river as well. It's a popular place for uh, folks to, to come rafting. You see a lot of folks camping and rafting along the river. And most of this region is very inaccessible. You can't even get to some of this scenery by car. And that's really, a major selling point to traveling by train in this area because you really cannot get a perspective of the scenery. We actually had two guests in our, our dome car who were from Denver, who actually took the train from uh, Denver to Moab, and then they turned the, took the train back to Denver, and they said they have traveled by road in this region several times over the years, and they said they couldn't see the scenery uh, the way they've seen it from the train on the on the four days that they were journey on the journey. Uh, I love this photograph because it's a photo from inside the uh, Silverleaf Dome car, and you can see how much of the scenery you see right from your seat. So um, you got this beautiful red rock again. This is going through Ruby Canyon, and you just sit back and relax, and you're kind of in awe of this majestic scenery uh, surrounding you. One of the highlights along the journey, and this is part of the book cliffs. Uh, this is called Mar Mount Garfield. It's actually the highest peak of the 200-mile book cliffs. It's about 6,700 feet uh, in height, um, and it's named after the 20th president of the U.S., James Garfield. Um, it's a beautiful area here. As you're getting into this part of, of uh, Colorado, we cross the border, and the book cliffs continue. And uh, you'll see in this region, you'll see some um, peach orchards as well as some vineyards because there's actually a wine region in this part of Colorado. And then we make our way towards Glenwood Springs and eventually you start to see more trees, more foliage. This photograph here was probably taken right about this time of the year. Um, last week, we were just starting to see the aspen trees turn their spectacular uh, gold yellow colors amidst um, some of the pine trees and the rock formation. So it just makes for a gorgeous backdrop. Um, this is Glenwood Canyon, and this is this is a rugged canyon. It's the largest in the upper Colorado and is uh, considered one of the most scenic natural features in, in the U.S. Uh, uh, United States. Then we arrive in um, a little town, little kind of little resort town of Glenwood Springs, sleepy little kind of western town. The train pulls right into the train station and all the hotels that we work with in Glenwood Springs are uh, within a short walk, but we do provide coach transportation for our guests. And we also include luggage handling. So it's, it's a very worry-free, carefree experience. Um, when you depart your destination, your luggage goes um, on different coaches altogether, which are brought right to the next destination. So when you arrive at your hotel in Glenwood Springs, your, your checked luggage, your large luggage will be waiting for you at the hotel. All that we ask you to bring on board the train with you is a small, uh, soft, like a uh, soft-sided carry-on bag, like a backpack to bring along with you any medications, sunglasses, an extra layer, like a sweater or a jacket, because the, the, the temperatures can change, of course, from Moab up into Glenwood Springs could change um, you know, 10, 20 degrees even by the time you get into town. So we typically get into to Glenwood Springs at about 7 p.m. So on this eastbound route, we actually serve um, 
uh, dinner on board the train, which is usually you know late afternoon, early evening before we arrive into Glenwood Springs. The next day we'll board the train again. The second day is a little bit longer, roughly eight hours. We'll get on the train about 9 a.m. 9 a.m. We have coffee waiting for you right at the train station before you board the train. And then we go through a series of just spectacular canyons, um, tunnels, and gorges throughout this day as we ascend up into the mountains, into the Rockies, towards uh, the beautiful city of Denver. So just some more highlights uh, of the scenery. We'll go through uh, Byers Canyon, and we'll go, and we'll also see from the train a great view of the Gross Reservoir Dam. And uh, the Gross Reservoir actually contains uh, much of the drinking water for the greater Denver area and uh, parts east where there's a farming region. So this this dam was built for the purpose of that, and it's quite spectacular. Then uh, some of the other highlights, and here's a great photo. I, I, I took from the train. This was probably less than a half an hour after we left Glenwood Springs and traveling again through more of the Glenwood Canyon. If you like to try to take one of those, this is a photograph taken obviously from outside the viewing area, which uh, there's a little opening to take a picture. Uh, when the train makes a nice bend around a curve, it makes for kind of an iconic photograph there. Beautiful scenery. Um, we'll travel through some areas that are more uh, flat and plain-like with some cliffs and then all of a sudden the train will make a turn and you'll be traveling through a gorge and you'll see the Colorado River down below, um, much like this photograph here. And one of my favorite views and, and, and highlights along this train route is uh, Byers Canyon, which as you can see, if you look to the, if you're looking from the train up, you can see these cliffs and rugged peaks uh, of these, uh, this canyon going along the Colorado River. It's just, just spectacular. And uh, we traveled through this section for a little while, as well as Gore Canyon. Now, Gore Canyon has two parts, Upper Canyon and Lower. And um, we saw lots of folks uh, fly fishing, as well as whitewater rafting. And there's an area here which has class five rapids where only com professional competitions take place for rafting and kayaking, kayaking competitions uh, in the Gore Canyon. So it's just amazing scenery. Again, this is a this is not a professional photograph. This is one that I took with my iPhone right from the train. So you don't have to be a professional to get great photographs like this one here. Um, I did not take this photograph. This is an aerial picture, of course, uh, but this is a great uh, photograph to kind of exemplify a section of this experience called the Tunnel District. So it's about a, a 15 mile stretch where you're going to go through. Um, several tunnels, about 30 different tunnels, all in different sizes and lengths. So you can see here, this is a very small one, but they had to build these tunnels to make it through the mountains in order to create this, this, uh, this commerce, this train uh, route to go east and west to, to, to bring uh, goods and services to, uh, to, to between Salt Lake City and Denver and beyond. Then we'll make our way as we're getting towards Denver, we get to the highest peak on the journey, which is over 9,000 feet in this uh, little resort town called Winter Park, Colorado, which has somewhere of like th somewhere like 300 feet over the course of the winter season, uh, 300 feet of snow. It's just an amazing uh, resort town. You can see the, the in the background that some of the ski slopes there. And you go through this beautiful pine forest as you're traversing this region here and winding your way towards Denver. Uh, then we'll also go along another great engineering feat called the Big Ten Curve. Um, this was basically designed um, to offset the steep grade so the train could make it through the mountain pass here. And this big uh, curve was, um, was built years ago and, and they, they had to do this in order to make the trains given the weight of the, the freight traffic to make it through the, the steep grade. And the, and the train will go around this big, big curve. You can actually see it um, when there's another train coming by, you can actually see it go through the tunnel as you're making through the, through the, the curve itself. So let's talk about the destinations. You've got three great destinations on this train route. You've got the resort town of Moab, which is a sleepy little uh, um, village of 5,000 people really which has got some quaint uh, restaurants and, and shops in town and is the jumping off point to amazing national parks. 
Plenwood Springs, another great little resort town, and of course, Denver, Colorado. Um, Moab, you're only 10 minutes away from Moab, where your hotel will be, to Arches National Park, and only about 40 minutes away from Canyonlands and Dead Horse Point, which are must-see experiences in this area. The town of Moab, um, again, about 5,000 in population, kind of a sleepy little town, has some great little shops and restaurants downtown. And again, you're, you're very close to Arches. And Arches National Park um, was only made a national park back in 1970. And it, it displays over 2,000 arches in total. I actually thought there were only maybe a dozen <laughs> because I'd seen photos and saw pictures like this one here and said, oh, wow, this is going to be great to see. But there are 2,000 arches in this national park, ranging in size, of course, but um, they're, they're just spectacular. And then you have Dead Horse Point on the right-hand side there in the corner, which looks like the Grand Canyon, and that's carved out by the Colorado River. Hotels in town, um, we partner with properties like the Hyatt Place, the Hilton, by, uh, the Hoodoo by Hilton, uh, the a Westin property called the Element. There's a lot of new hotels in Moab because in the last few years, there's been an increase in demand for this destination. And most recently, of course, with folks staying in the United States and traveling in the US, uh, it is building up and getting more and more popular. And then we have Glenwood Springs. Of course, you're only there for an overnight, but if you have time, you can enjoy the downtown area. There's some um, little restaurants in town if you wanna grab a quick bite to eat or go for a drink. The Glenwood Springs Resort is one of the properties that we use. And of course, the springs, this town has become famous because of the hot springs, the natural waters that come up from the earth and there have healing properties. So you can actually go to this uh, particular hot springs pool. Um, if you're not staying at the resort, you can pay a fee, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, swim in the pool and use the facility here. And then the downtown area, uh, it's kind of historic because there are a lot of folks who have visited Glenwood Springs over the years, Al Capone, Buffalo Bill, and a famous gunslinger named Doc Holliday. Excuse me, I had to have a little drink there. <coughs> Doc Holliday was once a, he's named Doc Holliday because he was actually a dentist. And then he became a gunslinger and a gambler. And he's actually buried here in a, um, in a grave site just outside of town, but here's the Doc Holiday Tavern, which is very much a kind of a dive, but it's a kind of a historic place to go visit in uh, downtown Glenwood Springs. The hotels we all use, like I mentioned earlier, are very close walking distance, anywhere from a three minute to eight minute walk, but we do provide transportation. The Hotel Colorado there on the right side, a uh, very historic property, very unique property, um, and uh, uh, quite, quite fascinating. Gorgeous lobby and actually beautiful um, uh, gardens outside with an outdoor patio and a, and a bar outside. It's really nice. And then Denver, a sprawling city, a growing city, a uh, great mixture of modern and uh, classic um, architecture. Um, this is um, 16th Street where there's a lot of restaurants. I have to say the restaurant scene here, the, the, the dining out scene is great. So if you spend a couple of extra days in Denver, um, just expect to have some great food and dining opportunities, and then culture. Um, you've got the Denver Art Museum, which has uh, 70,000 pieces, and over between Chicago and Los Angeles, it's one of the largest uh, art museums in the country. So it's a beautiful building, but it's also a great place if you love to uh, learn more about art and uh, culture. The hotels um, that we partner with are close to uh, a central location here near Union Station, uh, the Crawford Hotel, the Maven, the Oxford, very um, classic hotel properties. These are three of amongst several hotels that we use right in the heart of Denver that are close to where uh, the train will arrive and depart from. So now I wanna talk about a few packages that we have to offer um, with our partners at Vacations by Rail. <clears throat> so if you're looking for something that's just very short, and maybe some, some type of opportunity where you can build a package on before or after Denver and Moab. We have packages called Classic. So Rockies to the Red Rocks Classic is a four day, three night that includes hotels in Moab, 
of course, Glenwood Springs is part of the rail package and, and one night in Denver. So for those folks who kind of want to customize their before and after uh, the rail experience, this is a good package to consider. And it goes both eastbound and westbound. A more extensive package, which, which Vacations by Rail has just added to their um, package product offering is Rockies to the Red Rocks at Leisure from Las Vegas. So you can see here on the map, it's quite a busy package because it includes so many national parks. Um, if you were to start in Las Vegas, we include one night, but you can obviously work with your Vacations by Rail consultants to add a night or two in Vegas. Um, we will travel by coach, again, with a local uh, driver and local tour director, local guide. We'll take you and, and give you that experience of the, the knowledge of the region. We'll overnight in Bryce Canyon, but not after stopping as well in Zion National Park. We'll do a night in Bryce Canyon. We'll visit the north rim of the Grand Canyon. We'll overnight in Lake Powell, <clears throat> which is beautiful. And then we'll also spend two nights in Moab. And from Moab, again, we're close to um, Canyonlands National Park. Arches is right there. Dead Horse Point is just beautiful. And that's the photograph there to the right. And then Monument Valley, <clears throat> which is another iconic uh, park to visit. And then, of course, two days on board the train. A little bit shorter package from Salt Lake City is called the Explorer Salt Lake City. Again, you can travel east or westbound. If you start in Salt Lake City, you do one night. It's about a four hour coach ride between Salt Lake City and Moab, but we do make a stop in the Sundance Mountain Resort and uh, folks can explore that beautiful uh, town. And then we spend two nights in Moab with experiences at Canyonlands and Arches and before taking the train to Denver. For those who want to do the train and come back to Denver, we've got a couple of packages. The most popular is called the Red Rocks Excursion Denver Return. So you would start in Denver uh, with one night. You would take the train out to Moab, and then you have three nights in Moab to really explore this area and spend more time in Arches National Park and Canyonlands. And then after the three nights, reboard the train to come back to Denver. So it becomes a basically a round trip experience. And I have to say the folks who were on the train who were taking the train back to Denver said that they they could see things from a different perspective on the journey back. And they really, really enjoyed the service uh, of our staff on board the train so much that they really felt like being on the train for that full four days was, was worth the uh, investment. So I'm going to turn it back over to Lynn and uh, with a polling question, and then we'll probably wrap it up with some questions and answers. Thanks, Michael. So here is our next polling question. It is, what is most important to you in selecting a vacation? So you see four options up there, ranging from the train experience and destinations to sightseeing and excursions, as well as you know having a little bit of free time and balanced with that, um, some, some guided excursions. So we'll keep this open for another 15 seconds or so, just to give everyone a chance to participate. Okay, we're going to go ahead and close the poll. And this is this is pretty tight. It seems like sightseeing and excursions, destinations and train experience are all just two percentage points away from each other. Those are the top three. And that's not a surprise. Those are three really difficult ones. I, I think they're all important. So I, I feel all of you. Mm -hmm. So if you'd like to learn more about our rail vacations featuring Rocky Mountaineer, you can definitely request a brochure. You can do so by calling 877-929-7245, or you can uh, download a brochure or request one online at vacationsbyrail.com. Oops, wrong direction. So Michael, I know we have some special offers. Uh, would you like to step us through some of them? Yes, thank you, Lenny. We do. Uh, we just announced uh, recently a brand new offer called uh, November to Remember. 
uh, for the Rockies to the Red Rocks uh, package. We are operating uh, the train through uh, November 18th. So uh, in November, our guests who book a package will receive a $300 uh, savings per couple. And that would be for anything from a two-day rail to one of the longer uh, packaged itineraries that we, we spoke about. And you know, November, uh, it, it can be considered off season in a lot of destinations. What I have to say, you know, going to like Moab in that area, it's going to be a little cooler. When I was there last week, it was pushing 90 degrees and it was a little hot to be walking about. So, you know, looking at maybe 60 degree high temperatures in Moab and probably going to see some snow in the mountains, I think it's a fantastic time to travel to, to this area. In addition to that, if for this season, if you make a deposit on a package, um, you, your deposit is refundable up until 30 days prior to traveling. So I know we're getting towards the end of the season, but if you were to book a package in you know, mid-November, you have up until that 30 days prior um, to have your deposit refundable in case you, you know, change your mind or, or have to make other plans. So that's helpful. We also have um, offer for 2022. So um, this, this slide speaks to our Canadian routes as well. So if you are interested in Canada, uh, our Canadian packages for 22 are for sale. And we have a, a, a free perks package where we offer some additional perks for Canada. But for the US route, um, right now, if you book any 22 package, um, if you book before October 8th, you'll receive basically our best pricing. And that would be basically pricing for 22, that is similar to 2021 pricing, um, uh, as we as we prepare to launch our full pricing uh, in October, which um, will be some price increases on some of the packages. So it's it's good to book early because you do receive some uh, uh, early bird pricing on our uh, 2022 packages. And then right now we have a risk free deposit. So if you deposit on your package for 2022 it's refundable up until December 3rd. So you have um, you know, until December 3rd, if you decide uh, you wanna change plans or, or uh, cannot travel next year. Thanks, Michael. Those are some great offers. Um, if you'd like to take advantage of those offers and make a reservation, you can contact any of our rail specialists toll free at 877-929-7245. You can also book online at vacationsbyrail.com. So it is time for some Q&A. So Michael, are you ready? I am ready. I will do my best. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me pull. Wow, we have a lot of these. Okay, where should we start? Um, are airport hotel transfers available? So um, that's a question that depends on the destination. So in Denver, we don't provide uh, airport trans transfers. Um, there's several options for um, transportation in Denver. There's a very user-friendly uh, public transport transportation with a uh, like a, a, a rail service that goes directly from the airport to uh, Union Station, which is Union Station is a short walk to all of the hotels that we use. Obviously, taxis and Ubers are available. Um, if you're flying into Salt Lake City or Las Vegas, we do offer a transfer if you're not buying a tour package. So if you're buying a tour package that would start in Salt Lake City or Las Vegas or end in, La in those cities, your transportation um, would be included from you know, point A, point B. But both of those cities have very easy access to the airport and again, very inexpensive transportation. So um, we do offer transfers to Moab from those places if you're just doing a classic package. And you can fly into Moab. So if you are doing a package that is like rail only and you want to start your journey in moab um you they are now uh, united airlines and delta are now offering um, flights from salt lake city and denver which are short and not too expensive and you can go right into moab's airport and there's a shuttle service from there that's very inexpensive it's like 25 dollars 
and it runs in conjunction with those flights that come in because there's so few flights that it's there's uh, only the need for those shuttles on at certain times of the day so so that's I know probably a longer answer than maybe you wanted but that at least gives you a little bit of an idea and that's really helpful thank you um, well, that leads into another question we have here, which is, I don't remember seeing a train station in Moab. Where do you board the train? So can you give us an idea of where the Moab train station is located? <clears throat> yeah, you're correct. There is not a train station in Moab, and we are the only passenger rail service that has access to Moab. Um, basically, the um, operation of, of Amtrak goes goes around Moab, if you will, so you really don't get into Moab. So we've arranged uh, um, an area where we've cleared out uh, a flat uh, area, and it's called a siding, and it's about 10 minutes from Moab, where we take our guests by coach from downtown Moab, from one location where we, we pick up all of our guests and transport our guests to that siding. And right from the coach, you walk off your coach and you're you know, less than 100 feet to walk on board the train right from there. And the backdrop is wonderful because you've got these red cliffs right behind you as you're getting off the coach and boarding the train. So um, it's it's very user friendly. Did it, I did it a little over a week ago and it was a very, very easy process. Great. Um, how far are hotels from the train station? Uh, well, they've we've chosen hotels to be close to to everything. So, um, as I mentioned, in Glenwood Springs, it's it, you could if you're if you like to walk, if you don't have any mobility concerns, you could walk, and it's about an eight to ten minute walk from the furthest hotel to the train station, or vice versa. But we do provide coach transportation. Um, the in Moab, as I just mentioned where we pick up and drop off our guests for the train, we provide that coach transportation already. So that would, you wouldn't walk to that station or that location. And then um, the same thing for uh, Denver. Right now we have a location in Denver where we board the train and we provide a coach transfer, which takes like, like a same, same as Moab, about 10 minutes to, to get from the hotels to, the, uh, to where the train is boarding or deboarding. All right, perfect. Um, are tickets to the Hot Springs included? I'm guessing we're talking about Glenwood Springs. Yeah, the Glenwood Springs Resort is one of the properties we use. Uh, we cannot guarantee which hotel you'll be staying in on the when you book a package with us. We assign hotels usually about 30 days prior to departure, and you'd find out that information with your documents. So if you're staying at the Glenwood springs resort you would have access to the pool but as i mentioned earlier for a small fee you can get a pass to use the facility and stay and and uh, use the hot springs pool uh, there at the resort so if you're not staying at the glenwood springs um, a block over is the hotel colorado you can just walk over and buy a pass and across the bridge is the hotel denver so again it's it's quick access and um and available to the public. Okay, thank you. Um, here's another question about Glenwood Springs. How has the western drought affected service? Is the flooding damaging Glenwood Springs affecting the route? Uh, we have nothing, none of our services were affected. We were able to operate our trains from from August 15th onward. Uh, there was, there, it wasn't really flooding. Um, so maybe you're speaking of uh, a landslide that took place just a couple of weeks prior to our first departures. It affected the tracks for maybe three or four days and they cleared them. It affected the highway more because of where it fell. So you've got the highway to one side of the river, you've got the train tracks on the other. The land side was on the side, um, the mudslide was on the side of where the highway is. So they're still repairing the highway. It's down to like one lane there, but it, it only affected the train tracks for like three or four days. It was cleared off in time for our uh, for our first rail rail departure. So there were no effects, and and we were operating at full full speed. Thank you. Um, how long is the drive from Las Vegas and other stops along the way? 
Yeah, so if you're going to take the transfer from Las Vegas to Moab, as opposed to doing a tour package, which would in naturally include stops and overnights in some of the, the resort, the national parks areas, if you're going to take this transfer straight, um, I think it's about a six, seven hour uh, uh, journey. But they, but our coach company that we work with does make uh, comfort stops every couple of hours, as well as, as a, a you know 45 minute to an hour stop for lunch at a select spot where there's food available. So, um, so yeah, there's you know it's a little bit longer than going from Salt Lake City, but we ma we make it as comfortable as we can on, on these climate controlled uh, motor coaches. Great. Um... Let's see, do we overnight in national parks or outside the park? So there were a couple of packages you talked about that included overnights there. Right. <clears throat> um, the, the hotels that we that our partner works with are typically right outside the park uh, for the most part. It, like so Zion National Park only has like one property that's in the park that is very hard to actually access group space within that property um at you know at lake powell we stay right at right on lake powell there's a hotel there um and um in bryce you're just outside of bryce but not not in there's nothing there's no hotels in bryce canyon per se so um and then when we visit grand canyon we're stopping there for a few hours to see the north rim but we're not overnighting there so, you know, for that package that included a lot of those parks, the the hotels are within close, close proximity, but not staying overnight in the parks per se. Great. Um, does the reflection on the train windows uh, make photography difficult? Well, you saw some of the photos that I, that I took, uh, one of Ruby Canyon, there was a photograph of um, uh, Byers Canyon, um, or I'm sorry, Gore Canyon, and uh, another photograph uh, I, I took of the scenery. So, it you the the key is so you know, you've got to kind of play around with it. If you're too far from the window, you will get a little bit of a glare. If you put your iPhone or your camera right near the glass, you can usually get a shot without any glare. Um, but again, you've got that little outdoor viewing area. A lot of folks will. When we hit a scenic spot that they want to take a photograph, you can walk back to the outdoor viewing area and there's a kind of an open window with no glass. Um, just be mindful when you're going through the tunnel region uh, to keep your hands in. They, they remind you, of course, our hosts uh, remind you of these safety concerns, but do not want to put your, your arms out too far going through some of the tunnels. <laughs> um, yeah. That's a good tip. Yes. How many people can sit in the lounge car? So about uh, 24 to 30 guests, um, about 24 guests can sit in lounge car and in at one time. What I've discovered in talking to some of the folks who took our Silverleaf Plus, we found that people would just kind of rotate in and out leisurely, and there was never an issue with seating. We've got several seats, and then we've got a, a, a couple of like high top. Um, tables where you can stand and have uh, an appetizer and drink there and folks will usually stay have a cocktail sit and chat and they'll come and go uh, leisurely um, so at one time at one at any point half of the guests that are in there in the train car can be in the lounge car but we just find that folks migrate in and out okay great uh, can wheelchair passengers be accommodated um, yes, we we make every effort to um, make sure that our our wheelchair accessible uh, that we are wheelchair accessible on our trains. Uh, we have a, um, an area towards the back of the coach where we can lock in a wheelchair um, and provide a space for those guests. Or uh, we have a lift that'll uh, get folks on on and off the train. So what you just need to do when you make that inquiry with vacations by rail is let them know what your requirements are as far as equipment and how, and what needs to be transported so we can make those arrangements ahead of time the 
further we know, the, the easier it is for us to make sure we have uh, all, all of those things uh, in order for you. All right, wonderful. Um, does the chain ever get delayed or have to give way to freight train? Uh, we, we do give way to freight, um, but there's far little freight traffic on this route as compared to our, our Canada routes, actually, where we share tracks with um, CP and CN, and those are major areas for uh, commerce. So um, th there's very few delays um, caused by um, having to give way to freight traffic on this route. So, you know, typically when we say we're departing at two from Moab and we'll get into Glenwood Springs around seven, I'd say there's probably easily about a 20 to 30 minute window before or after uh, that seven o'clock time frame. You know, I just wouldn't make a schedule a time to meet a friend for a drink or a, make a dinner reservation um, necessarily close to that 7 p.m. time because it can't be guaranteed as to coming into tr into town exactly at that time, but it's, it's pretty timely. Great. Um, we have a few questions about masking requirements and health requirements um, on the train and for these vacations. Can you talk about Rocky Mountaineers policies? So in, in the on this U.S. route, um, when guests are on a, a motor coach transfer and when they're boarding the train and when they're seated in the train itself, in, in their train seat in the car, they have to uh, be wearing a mask. And it is when you're obviously when you're dining or enjoying a beverage at your seat that you can remove the mask. But by local mandates and uh, and requirements of the CDC, we're still requiring guests when they're boarding and not enjoying a beverage or a snack to uh, to be wearing a face covering at this time. We don't know what 2022 is going to bring, but for this season, that's the the current policy. Great. Um, do you run during the winter months? Uh, no, we we don't operate in either U.S. or Canada. Um, our last departure for this season is November 18th for the U.S. route. We'll begin our, our season uh, next year in late April for the U.S. Uh, route, and that will go through, again, through early November. Um, so we'll have a longer season. This year was a preview season because of the planning that was involved in launching the new route, but uh, next year will be a full full uh, season, but does not operate over the winter time. This as you can imagine, the, the the amount of snowfall in the Den, in Denver and the, in the Rockies uh, may be prohibitive to making the service operate uh, smoothly during the winter time. Great. We have time for one more question, and it is: Do you still have vacancies for 2021 October? Yes, we do. Yes, uh, we have. Plenty of space available, and uh, I would only imagine that maybe there may be a few, a handful, a small number of dates that are, are, are maybe sold out, but I don't think so. We could be sold out on Silverleaf Plus because that's been very popular, but I know that we do have inventory for October in both east and westbound directions. So certainly uh, inquire soon if, if, you're, if you're date specific or if you're package, package specific. Uh, for next month. All right. Thanks so much, Michael. So uh, that is all the time we have for questions. Um, but I do know we have others that are waiting for answers. So we are going to hand those off to a rail specialist. They will be able to contact you directly and make sure all of your questions are answered. So um, I'd like to thank you for joining us today to learn all about the Rockies to the Red Rocks route and some of the great itineraries featuring this luxury train through the Rocky, uh, through Rocky Mountaineer service. Um, Michael, I'll let you wrap it up for us. Okay, thank you, Lynn. Um, hope you enjoyed the presentation. Thanks for all the great questions, by the way. And um, obviously we're more than happy to continue to answer more um, th um, through various means. But, you know, this having just taken this route um, and having, I'm, I've been with Rocky Mountaineer for uh, almost seven years now, 
I was very impressed with the scenery. Uh, our staff on board the train is fantastic. We've got a great team out there waiting for you to come and enjoy a luxury rail experience through uh, America's West. And uh, the Vacations by Rail team is also very experienced in planning a package to help find the right uh, itinerary and uh, right type of vacation for, for you and, and your fellow travelers. So thank you for joining us today and, and look forward to seeing you out west soon. Thanks so much. Thanks, Michael.